Hey everyone, today I'm in the kitchen and I am going to show you how to make saltine toffee. Now this is sometimes called crack candy and for good reason because it is so addicting. If this stuff is in the house, you can guarantee all of my self-control goes out the window. You pour a buttery, brown sugar butter toffee over salty saltines, top it with chocolate and whatever other delicious things you'd like to top it with, and it comes out amazing. It's super easy, let me show you how to make it. The first step is to get your pan ready. So today I'm using a 12 by 17 pan. You can use a smaller pan if you'd like, and we'll talk about how to adjust the recipe based on what size pan you use. But I have a 12 by 17 pan lined with parchment paper. Make sure your pan has sides because if it doesn't have sides, that buttery toffee is gonna run all over your oven and you do not want that. So get your pan ready. And if you don't have any parchment paper, you can use aluminum foil, that will work also. So you need about a sleeve and a half of saltines, about 48 to 50, depending again on the size of your pan. And we just lay out the saltines to cover the entire bottom of the pan. Now some have asked if they can use Ritz crackers. You can totally use Ritz crackers, they are so good with this. Some have also asked if they could use graham crackers. Now you can, but graham crackers aren't salty, so you don't get that salty sweet combination. It will work if you would like to try it, but it's honestly not our favorite. We would stick with a saltine or butter cracker. Get those crackers as evenly as you can on the pan. They're going to adjust a little bit once you pour the buttery toffee over top, and that's okay. But we have a grid of eight by six, so again, about 48 crackers. Set that aside and get a small saucepan and turn it to medium low heat to start. And into it, I'm going to add three sticks of butter. Yes, that's a lot of butter. It's one and a half cups. And then one and a half cups of dark brown sugar. So here's where the adjustments comes in for the pan size. You just wanna be sure you add equal amounts of salted butter, use real butter, and dark brown sugar. Dark brown sugar over light brown sugar because it just deepens that toffee flavor. If all you have is light brown sugar, you can use that. If your pan is a little bit smaller, you can only use one cup of each if you prefer, or if you don't like as thick of a toffee layer, you can of course lower the amount also. But we find for this size pan, 12 by 17, that one and a half cups of each works beautifully. The butter is going to start to melt and the sugar will start to dissolve into the butter. Stir it a little bit at the beginning just to help everything mix together. There might be little clumps of brown sugar that have stuck together and you can use a whisk or a spatula or a wooden spoon to get those lumps out. You just want it smooth and creamy. Now as the butter starts melting and that mixture starts to simmer, you want to make sure that you don't scrape the sides of the pot. The sugar will start to crystallize a little bit on the sides of the pot, and if you scrape the sides of the pot, then that sh those sugar crystals will get in your mixture. Now, after the butter has melted, I make sure that the temperature is on about medium heat, and I want the mixture to start boiling. Now at this point, I usually do not mix it. The butter will sometimes separate a little bit. I might take a whisk and whisk it a little bit in the center, but I'm just waiting for it to start boiling. You wanna make sure it's at a full boil before you start the timer. Once it's at a full boil, this will cook for three minutes, and that's what's gonna give it that perfect texture for the saltine toffee. I like to make sure there's bubbles, not just on the outside of the pan, but also on the inside of the pan to know that it's at a full boil. Now, as the mixture cooks, you can see it starts to get bubbly and it will start rising a little bit. That's okay, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's going to smell like caramel. Your house will smell so good. So once the three minutes are up, you're gonna set it aside, take it off the heat if you're using a traditional stove. I'll remove mine in a minute. Bring in your pan of saltines and we'll get ready to pour that caramel on top. Take the pan and just pour it as evenly as possible over the saltines.
Again, I don't scrape the pan because there will be sugar crystals on the outside. I just let as much drip out as possible. Set it aside, take a spatula, and just spread that caramel all over the saltines. It doesn't have to be perfect because as it's in the oven, it's going to bubble and spread and kind of surround all of those saltines. So I have the oven preheated to 400 degrees. I'm going to pop this in the oven for five minutes. Take your saltine toffee out of the oven. It's gonna be bubbly, it's gonna be really hot. Next, it's time to sprinkle on the chocolate chips. I'm using a dark chocolate chip today. You can use semi-sweet milk chocolate. You can use white chocolate if you'd like but I use a whole bag, it's about 10 or 12 ounces of chocolate chips. Sprinkle them on as evenly as possible. Now they will start melting right away, but what I do just to help them melt more evenly is to pop this back into the oven for just one minute. So just one minute in the oven helps those chocolate chips totally melt. Take a rubber spatula and very carefully just smooth that chocolate. Lastly, it's time to decorate the top. If you'd like, you can leave the toffee as is. You can put a coarse salt over the top, which just enhances that sweet, salty flavor. You can put some sprinkled pecans over the top, which is what we're gonna do today. Then, to make ours extra pretty, we're gonna put a drizzle of white chocolate. So I have some white chocolate melted here. I just did it quickly in the microwave. I'll take a spoon and just drizzle back and forth. This candy is also fun to make for the holidays, so you can put Christmas sprinkles on top or fall sprinkles or Valentine's Day sprinkles, whatever you'd like. You could also put little toffee bits on top. That is really good. The hardest part is waiting. So now it's time to just let this sit and that chocolate will start to set as the toffee cools. After it gets to be a little bit more towards room temperature, you can pop it into the fridge to help that chocolate set more quickly. You'll know the toffee is ready when the chocolate is completely set. So parchment paper is really nice because you can just take out the whole sheet from the pan, lay it on a flat surface, and then cut. Now the edges, you can cut off if you'd like even cuts. These little edges, put them in a Ziploc baggie and save them for some ice cream topping. They're fantastic. Now you can either cut this into as even squares as possible. Sometimes it's a little tricky because it is brittle, so it will break in whatever spot it feels like it needs to break. A lot of times it's fun just to use your hands and break apart pieces so that they're all different shapes and sizes. I'm Julie from Taste of Lizzie Tea. Head over to tasteoflizzytea.com to print this recipe. Thanks for watching and be sure to check back soon for a new video.